Well, hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on this classic wooden motor cruiser currently here in Maple Bay, British Columbia, along with the loving memory of my pup Jordy, all while fixing it up for some pretty ambitious cruising someday. If that's the sort of thing that you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. I'd love to have you. I'm gonna try and get at that horrible upper windshield helm, uh, which definitely needs to be completely rebuilt. However, the weather today is glorious, but it doesn't look like it's gonna be glorious all week. So, not quite sure what we'll get done. What we will get to, I'm really, really hoping, is tours of both of these beautiful wooden sailing yachts. And uh, I'm really looking forward to that. Okay, let's get to work. Well, all right then, as appealing as this job is, it is actually a massive project that I'm both looking forward to and dreading tremendously. So the idea, of course, is to replace the, oh, these benches are tied down, but anyway, the entire windshield structure across the front of the boat. And it's in really bad shape, as you can see in some cases, actually just literally falling apart. Um, the boat originally did have a, an upper helm like this, and in fact, amazingly enough, recently uh, someone reached out to me and uh, was able to show me some early pictures and including an early model of <laughs> MV Jordy, and I'll show that to you. This is the original builder's model for Jordy, then named motor vessel Joe Vaughn II. I've recently been connected with the family that built the boat, and I'm so excited to have access to some of the archives about her history. Pretty cool. Isn't that neat? We'll get into more detail on that uh, uh, later. Anyway, so it did have a, an upstairs windshield originally. It was slightly different layout, as you can see in the photos, but at least it does honor the boat. However, this one was built sometime in the 90s with Douglas fir and cheap lumberyard plywood, which just isn't gonna hold. Okay, so there's a number of problems. Let's just start with the one that just jumps out at me, and that's, I built this temporary mast arrangement uh, last year, and I, <laughs> I attached it directly to the windshield and weaved all the wires through the windshield. So as elegant as I actually find that, and it'll go back like this on the future windshield, it's all gonna come apart. Part, um, to be able to do this work, but I also need to be able to stay connected to the internet. So anyway, we'll figure out how all that happens. Um, furthermore, everyone's favorite bimini canopy, etc., is sort of randomly bolted to this as well. And again, was never intended to be here this long, but it's still here and it's still functional. So I'm going to somehow arrange for it to stay at least until I re redesign all of this. So there's a lot of cart before the horse stuff happening here. There's a couple other design changes I'm going to make, and that's that the windshield is actually going to move up about two inches and forward about two or three. And the reason for that is because the new helm that's got to be here has to start ahead of this line, uh, ahead of this bulkhead, because the control cables and stuff have to go down through there. And that makes it very tight into this corner here. So I want to take the windshield and move it forward just a hair, and that'll tidy that up a bit and I'm pleased with that. The other reason is I want to lift it up about two or three inches just so that when I'm actually sitting here at the helm, I say sitting here at the helm, but I'm really just sitting on this couch, I want just a little more protection um, looking forward. Uh, not necessarily that I can see underneath the windshield, or, but just a little bit. We'll play with that a little bit. And one of the most obvious points, of course, if I'm gonna remove all this, I'm gonna leave a disgusting mess against the existing uh, cabin tops and deck. And while here, there's already a disgusting mess here, which was the remnants of the old upper helm, which was over to port on this side. Really, the way to do this properly would be to remove this and then spend an eternity repairing all the decks, which includes fiberglass work and fairing work and all kinds of stuff, which I just can't do now because I need a ton of good weather for that. So I'm going to rebuild the windshields, do absolutely rudimentary repairs to the deck, but not bed the new windshield down permanently. Again, interim, temporary, it, I know, but it's the only way I can get some productive work done in this intermittent weather we have right now uh, and yet still be able to advance and do the deck work done properly uh, at a later date. Anyway, so it all begins with starting to take stuff apart. Oh, I am not pleased about having to take down the overheads again, uh, but... It's the price of accessing the bolts that actually hold the windshield on and accessing all the wires that all have to come out again out of the windshield, as I mentioned. 
Fun, 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 fun. There we go. At least they're not installed terribly securely. All right. Ah. Well, we'll have no internet for a little while. Shut down the old pep link. Float all its myriad of antennas. And there we go. And the remaining wires I'll have to disconnect up above. All right, one of the wires I have to remove is the antenna cable for the VHF radio. And I don't want to have to take all these panels down again to do it. So I'm going to try and fish it through with a piece of string and we'll see how effective that is. Before I go any further, I'm going to remove this piece of glass because I'm already missing the one on the other side and this is my template and uh, I would really rather not lose it. It was held in with these uh, bits of teak half round that uh, basically were just glued on and I actually redid them a few years ago hoping to extend the life of this whole arrangement a bit. but. Uh, I won't be putting them back in like this. Stanna, Scott. I stand you to death. The very best of Stan Rock. <sighs> okay. I very much suspect I've just removed the strongest part of this assembly. give you too much of a tour because Scott's playing some Stan Rogers which of course I love but too much of that and I'll get a uh, community violation strike. <laughs> uh. You figured this was long overdue? <laughs>
right then, so this side is not so crucial that I keep it as a template because there's so little left of it. And uh, so I'm just gonna actually cut it out of here, hoping that I can get the windshield off a little better. <laughs> I'm not sure that was even necessary. Okay. Oh, really? Okay, so the trick on this side is to not fall in the ocean. All right then. Let's just uh, put this somewhere. So here I am aboard uh, Rona. It's just an amazing boat, 49, 50 feet. Um, I'll get Ted to tell you about its its heritage, but I just wanted to have a quick walk to the foredeck. Will you look at this windlass, this vertical axis bronze beauty? Oh my gosh, that is, that is absolutely gorgeous. Anyway, oh, look at the monster spade anchor, 100 pounds. Um, this is just such a yacht. It just feels like such an extraordinary yacht. Um, wish it wasn't raining so bad, <laughs> but anyway, absolutely gorgeous pin rails. We've just been putting solar on both boats. Uh, Ted's got solar and Scott has some solar and they're both chugging away. Even in this weather, both making about 40 or 50 Watts, which is pretty impressive considering it's just absolutely miserable weather. Anyway, I'm going to have a quick look down in the uh, cockpit and then we'll go below. Hey guys, you staying dry down here? Oh, Holy mackerel, here. working hard. Beautiful, beautiful way place to spend the day. Not bad, actually dry as a bone, really, isn't it? Look at the size of this cockpit. It's pretty big. Wow. So what are you guys up to? re reefing all the teak? Yeah. Wow. Clean enough. That is a monster job. This is the last little push. Awesome, yeah. awesome. And thank God it's the only place that you've got under cover. Yeah. Very cool. Look at that bronze! Hey, hey! So anyway, meet Ted again. We had a brief chat earlier when from outside, but are you gonna show us your boat below? Yeah, I'd love to. Excellent. Come on, come Let's on just board. scoot down here. Yeah, come on. Wow. This is a lot of boat, man. Holy mackerel, this is a lot of boat. We'll just get us started. What is it? It is a uh, 1963, yeah. designed by Philip Rhodes. Yeah. It was built at the Stone Shipyard cool. in Alameda, California. Cool. And framing wise, it's it's like, uh, uh, what on it's what? oak. It's mahogany on mahogany oak. on oak. Yeah. Exactly. There's a lot of bronze. A lot, lot of bronze, bronze framing yeah. in the floor. Yeah. yeah. You were showing and me some uh, bronze before. Just amazing how this stuff is full of really neat things. Yeah. Cool. And you've had it. Just oh, wow. uh, September, two years. It'll be two years in September. Excellent. Yeah, All right. So the tough two years that are kind of hard to use it because of. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, she's, yeah. she's been in the San Francisco Bay. In okay. Sausalito. Yeah. And uh, we spent quite a bit of time on her there. We tried to get her up last summer and she wasn't quite ready. Right. And uh, we just brought her up uh, a few weeks ago. Right. And uh, she, did, super she did really well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. Well, it obviously <laughs> seems to be a very seaworthy boat. Excellent. Well, can you give us a quick tour around? Yeah, sure. So uh, we have a couple of uh, quarter bursts when we were coming up the coast. I right. use these a lot. Right. They were exactly. just really snug and safe. When and they're we were huge sea. because your decks are so wide. Yeah, they're they're yeah. Makes them really a really big. To get into, but once you get it down, <laughs> and um, but they were they were just splendid to yeah to tuck in there um, when we were coming up the coast. Really neat. And then this turns into one big bed here, or. Uh, this comes out and this comes out into um, two singles here. Two singles. Yeah. Wow. So lots of room. So you got all these seating areas, like a little 
little sort of living roomy thing back here because this yeah. is a totally different layout, right? It's a totally galley so far forward. Kind of and this table also yeah. goes in the cockpit if you want, so you can move it easily right. into the cockpit. Up into there. Yeah. Now, this doesn't look like your standard companion way. This like, there must be another way into this boat. Yeah, so that is right here. You've got <laughs> I was kind of teasing because I knew that's about a it. Trick question. Right? Isn't yeah. that a cool, look at this folks, spiral staircase down into this really neat midship what would this be called? Just a midship companion yeah, way? Yeah, midship companion way. Anyway, yeah, exactly. what's really neat about it is that you don't, you know, you arrive sort of central in the boat, which I think is kind of cool. Yeah. Massive galley. It's also nice to hang out on here, to sort of, yeah. just to sit your butt here and, and look around and drink some coffee right, or right. see what's going Good on. Good sort of Good. nav position to see what's going on outside. Mm -hmm. it's yeah. And it's also nice to have two ways in or out of the boat. Sure, yeah. sure. No, I really, I really love that. Yeah. Nice big nav station. Yep, nice big nav station. This was not original. No. Uh, this was added. Um, there's been five previous owners. Five. Was, would this been another bunk maybe? Or? This wasn't exactly. Yeah, this yeah. was another bunk. Well, it works great. Like um, and it's it's surprisingly great to ha hang out, especially yeah. if somebody's cooking over here. My wife's a great cook. Excellent. So often she'll time she'll be cooking and I'll be hanging. Hanging out there? Yeah. Excellent. Wow. And you know, you're you're taller than me. You're like 6'4", right? I'm 6'4". Yeah. And height was a, a big thing. And and look at that. Um, no problem at all. No, pro no problem. Yeah. I do yeah. really well. Yeah, that's really we nice. We looked at a lot of boats. We wanted height was a... Was a big thing. Yeah, it was a big massive, thing. Massive, massive head. Lots of room in there. Lots of room. It's got a wow. Wilcox head, which is <laughs> and, uh, just a great... Really? Head. It's a beast. Yeah. Does what yeah. you need, eh? Yep. Nice. Stove nice. works nice. really Stove. nice. Nice and cozy. Yeah. Um, just keeps the boat really cozy. Cool. I've used, we've used that a lot. Yeah, I imagine and, you would. Uh, here's our little galley. It's interesting, it used to have like a little tiny console here, which we'll right. probably rebuild at some point. Another little bit of a counter you mean or something? Yeah, and then at sea you could really uh, wedge up against that oh, and, gotcha. and hook. Yeah, yeah, um, exactly. We did fine, yeah. coming up the coast, but um, yeah. We'll do. Very neat, very yeah. neat. And so forward? Then, yeah, we'll go take a Can I just take a beat? Sure, yeah, of course. Wow, of course. look at this. Yeah, so Holy this the, uh, mackerel. Cabin. Oh, with a full double. And I have to say, it yeah. was pretty cozy in there this yeah. morning with the rain coming that down. That is and awesome. My, my wife, she's always got great bedding. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, super cozy in there. This is yeah. super nice. Yeah. yeah, and this is kind of interesting. This is surprisingly great to hang out in and read. You know, it's just a little to meditate or to read. I tell you, I swear by a little place to sit in, yeah. in, in the sleeping quarters. I have one too, and I'm, uh -huh. I'm going to need it. Just Especially if there's other people on the other boat, people right? It's a little, a little tuck away place. Yeah, I just love it's it. It's just really, yeah, great. You know, that's really, really awesome. Yeah. So, a summer of cruising. Yeah, um, came up to work with Scott. Been here for a couple of weeks. And yeah. He's been just, um, just a delight, and we're getting a lot of work accomplished. And we'll be here, I think, through next week. Obviously, it's been super fun to hang with you. <laughs> well, thanks and uh, <laughs> drink a beer at the end of the day. Cool. And then uh, my wife is, comes in tonight. She f comes in on a little seaplane right here. Right. And then we're going to just spend the summer enjoying your beautiful country. Just well, that's fantastic. Noodling up the coast. Awesome. So not, not a big plan. So well, Ted, it's been great to meet you. Great to hang out with you. Absolutely fantastic to see your boat. Oh, thank you so much. Super. What an honor, Peter. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. And another day of teeming bloody rain. It has really dumped here in the last little while. Um, the upside of it is uh, they'd also forecast quite a nasty blow. And uh, in fact, uh, Ted had gone off to the marina to lessen the load on Scott's mooring ball, um, which was very kind of him. But the blow doesn't seem to have transpired just yet. But Holy moly, it is really dumping, and well, I have freshwater leaks where I've never had leaks before. Anyway, all good fun. Lots to do. Hello, and welcome to the Travels with Jordy Beer of the Week, coming to you this morning from beautiful Maple Bay amongst the remnants of my old uh, upper helm. Well, yes, I did say this morning, due to the peculiar nature of the time-space continuum here in the Pacific Northwest, yesterday ended sometime about mid-afternoon the day before. As a result, it's this morning before I had a chance to shoot this, and even I am not overly inclined to enjoy an alcoholic beverage this early in the day. But I do have a beer for you. One of my very favorite beers is the ginger beer that I use for my dark and stormies, an alcoholic beverage. And it is simply known as the great 
gentleman ginger beer. Anyway, it's a Jamaican ginger beer that I've been buying for quite a while and I absolutely love it. One of the most extraordinary features of it is the fantastic it makes when opening. Isn't that absolutely fantastic? Anyway, okay. Well, um, cheers to you all. Ginger beer. Oh, so spicy, yummy. Okay, let's get right down to business. Last week's winner of a Travels with Jordy uh, t-shirt is Blue Gooseism. Blue Gooseism, get a hold of me, and that means uh, shooting me off an email at uh, swag at travelswithjordy.com, and I'll get you set up. Um, and cheers to you, Blue Gooseism. This is quite hot and spicy. It can't be drunk too fast. All right, I would very much like to thank uh, a new patron that came aboard last week. That's Robert um, <laughs> Shimojima. Shimojima. Anyway, I hope I pronounced that at least uh, close to respectfully. Anyway, thank you ever so much for coming aboard as a new patron. I'm so grateful for it. Cheers. Mm. I want to apologize. Uh, in the intro of this video, I suggested that we would get tours of both Altair and Rona, and we just didn't have a chance to shoot the uh, the tour of Altair, but we will have it for next week, uh, fear not. So I think um, that'll be a lot of fun. I hope you really enjoyed having a look around uh, Rona. It's an absolutely gorgeous boat owned by an absolutely wonderful couple. And that just brings us to the word of the week. Well, I think I've used it before, but it is so, so significant in my life right now. <clears throat> That's sunshine. We haven't had much of it yet. And it looks like the following week is going to have a reasonable amount of sunshine in it so we can get some reasonable headway on this upper helm. And I do have a time constraint from because one week from today, I begin a month long cruise with Lady Zephyrus aboard, um, about MV Zephyr, and uh, so Jordy will have to sit tight for that period. So I'd really like to get some headway on this. Not sure how far we'll get because it's quite a complex project. Anyway, so you have the word of the week. Uh, if you're new to the show and you'd like to know what that's for, simply use the word sunshine in a comment down below and I'll read it random through the next week or so. I'll pick it random over the week coming uh, worth of comments and if I pick you, you'll have one at Travels with Jordy t-shirt. Very good and cheers. See you next week. Oh, I could just sit here all day. <laughs>